Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here, and welcome to episode 5 of the Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1 Build With Me series. In the previous episode, we've finished our kit up to this standard here, but in this one, I'm going to show you a few simple techniques which can help enhance your model a little bit further. So join me in this video as I complete the series of this Build With Me Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1. Like I said in the previous episode, we're now at this point, and if this is as far as you want to go, then that is absolutely fine. There's no issue with that. Your model is now complete. However, I think there's a few things that we can do to help improve our model a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add an aerial wire. So on the real aircraft, we had um, an aerial wire which ran from this point to this point here. And the way I'm going to do that is by taking some of the plastic. So this is the plastic from uh, the frames on the outside of the kit when we uh, started building it. I'm going to use some of this. And uh, naturally, don't try this at home. I'm just going to show you what I do, but don't try this at home. So I'm going to stretch this sprue with some heat. So I've got myself a lighter, and I'm just going to heat up the plastic in the middle. And when it starts to get a bit warm and a bit flexible, I'm then going to pull the two parts away from each other. So you're starting to melt and then pull them away from each other. And now I've got a thin plastic wire. There we go. Just let that cool down, put some tension on it. And then all I need to do is snip it at a sensible place. It's about the right length. So we've done that. Well, I need my sanding stick, which we've been using throughout this build. And I just need to take a little bit of the paint off of the end of here. Just off the end of the uh, aerial mast. And I'm going to take a little bit of the paint off of the top of the mast there as well, just so we get a better bond. The glue that we've used throughout the build as well, that's going to make a reappearance and my cocktail stick for reapplying it. So the gel glue in this case is actually quite good because it helps the thing stay in the right place. A little bit on both points that we've just cleaned up. And then take your wire that we've just made, attach one end to there and the other end to the top of the mast. Now that I've done that, I just need to snip away the excess. And just make sure that it has a bit of tension on it. Because it should be sort of uh, in a straight line. That doesn't look too bad. So the next thing to do to that, when the glue has dried, is to get our number 33, which was the matte black that we used at the, uh, well, a couple of episodes ago. We used it on the propeller and the wheels. And we're just going to paint very carefully the aerial wire with this paint to make it blend in a bit more. I'm not going to bother thinning the paint. I'm just going to do it straight out of the pot. Just take your time. Take some care. Don't knock it off. Don't inadvertently put your paint anywhere that we don't want it to go. And you'll have to do both sides just to make it look about right. And this just helps to hide the fact that it is just a piece of plastic that we've just stretched. Next up, the number 11, which is a silver, so any silver paint that you've got. I'm going to use this to simulate a bit of chipping. So chipping is where the paint on the surface of the aircraft has been worn away and now the bare metal, the aluminium underneath, has started to show through. So tiny amount on my brush, and I'm just going to pick out areas where the pilot and ground crew may have walked, just dabbing on a little bit of paint to make it appear 
as though they've been walking on the aircraft there so that at the wing route is uh, quite traditionally somewhere they would have done it there may have been a little bit less on this side so we'll do that as well uh, there is some panels here on the engine which would have been removed occasionally so a tiny amount just to give the impression that some wear and tear has been done not too much it is the absolute smallest amount of paint being used here just to give the impression of chipping paint being worn away i will also do a tiny little bit around the gun uh, bays where the armorers would remove the panels I might remove that off of there actually that feels like too much there we go just a little bit around there just to give the impression that these panels are removed you don't want to go over the top sometimes less is more like that put maybe some around the ailerons because the ailerons are a moving part a little bit on this side as well just to repeat the effect shipping can be quite a handy tip or technique to use when um, you've made an error and for example you've knocked some paint off of somewhere or um, you've made a bit of a mess you just hide it with some shipping say oh it was intentional the whole time a little bit there maybe a little bit on the rudder just to simulate the bit where it moves and on the air surfaces there not much absolutely tiny amount repeat it on the other side some around the landing gear and the ejector ports there's panels on the bottom as well here that we can just do the edges of and maybe the intake there just a little bit on the edges there we go maybe a little bit on the leading edge of the landing gear bay doors and now that we've done that and we'll add a little bit there actually we could do a little bit of dry brushing so dry brushing is a technique where you add paint to your brush and then you remove it again like that so we take it all off and now i'm going to use what is essentially the residue on my engine exhausts just like that and it gives the impression of adding a bit of lightness to the engine exhausts and it picks up the raised details but leaves the lower details in shadow and it takes it from being just black to having a more metallic look and we can repeat this on anything we want to repeat it on really we can repeat it just like on the edges of the wings make it look like they've encountered some little bit of chipping as they've been going through the air we can do it on the raised details down here just so that they pick up the paint a little bit we could do it on the blades of the propeller I probably need a little bit more paint now so pick your paint up and then remove it again and you're just using the residue On the edges there. It is a very subtle effect, but it adds a bit of visual interest to the aircraft. Maybe a little bit around the canopy. On the aerial mast, maybe as well. There we go. So I'd say that's my chipping and uh, dry brushing done. If we look on the box, there's a couple of things on here which I feel like we can replicate. On the wings, you'll see that there are some red. I think there were canvas panels on the gun ports. I think that's to highlight to people where the guns are. So I'm going to replicate that. I've got here a red number 60. Not entirely sure what the specific name is, but um, it will do. Um, it's a little bit dried out, so I will add a tiny amount of water to it. I think that's about right. And then I'm very carefully going to add or try to add as best I can a bit of a square on each gun port and I'm going to do the top sides first and then I will flip the I've missed one on that wing I'll flip one over in a sec 
Oop, there we go. And then just do the other side here. Like that. If you wanted to, you could probably do this with some masking tape and then mask the area. But I feel like this is a good enough representation. Whilst I've got the red paint out, there is one more small thing that I want to do. On the port side, the light on the wingtip would have been red. So I'm going to make that one red here. It's very minimal. The starboard side would have been green and it's already painted in green. So I'm just going to leave that one. So leave them to dry. Another detail I'd like to replicate is that on the tips of the propeller blades, you can see there's a yellow markation. I know these are spinning. It's a little bit hard to see, but the tips of the propeller blades were marked in yellow so that the uh, ground crew or whoever's operating around the aircraft can see where the extent of that dangerous part is. So if it's spinning, they don't walk into it. And it was on both the front and the back side. So I've got a 24, which is a yellow. And again, just a tiny amount on the brush. And then very carefully, just do the tips of the blades. Doesn't have to go too far. I'm just doing it freehand. Again, you could mask this if you wanted to. But the amount of time it takes to mask, I feel you could just get a straight line by just doing that. And we'll do the back sides as well. So the very last thing I want to do is to simulate some smoke and grime. Again, on the box artwork here, you can see that we've got some engine exhaust smoke here. And on the wings, the guns have got some gun smoke uh, streaking across the aircraft there. So I'd like to represent that. And I have been very kindly provided with some powders from Humble. This was a free sample. Um, all opinions remain my own though. They let me have a, a sample of this to try out. So you can see in here, we've got a selection of different ones. I'm gonna try out the smoke one. So let's dig that one out. If you don't have any uh, powders, you could try some dry brushing like we did with the silver just to go across the um, gun ports and those areas. But pastels, work just as well so if i was a betting man i'd say the one on my right is the smoke because it's not quite as dark as the one on the left so we'll use that one and for this i have swapped out to a different brush so this is another uh, starter set brush that i've had obviously it's um, seen a bit of wear and tear over the years it's not perfect it's a bit old and a bit tatty but the one thing that is important about this brush is that it is completely dry it's not wet in any way, which means that when we use this dust, we don't get it clumping and forming another kind of paint. We want it to be a powder. So there we can see our powder pigment in there. And I'm just gonna pick a little bit up on my brush and work it into the brush ever so slightly. And then working in the direction of airflow. So we're gonna start with our gun port here and then work backwards and then just a little bit on each one like that. Where's the last one? There it is. Working in the direction of airflow as straight as you can get it. Don't have to go back too far on the wings. Just enough to make it look as if the gun's been fired. There's not quite enough powder on that bit. So just pick up a tiny bit more. There we go. So I'd say that's about right for the top wing. We'll do the other side. And this just adds another layer of visual interest to the aircraft. Do a little bit more. It will show up a little bit better on the lower side because the lower side is much lighter in color. And on the lower side, it's worth remembering that there is the ejector uh, ports here as well. These are the holes in the wings on the bottom. And I would imagine that there would be some smoke residue coming out of those as well because part of the gun mechanism so we'll just add a little bit there there are a few other bits and pieces on the underside we've got our engine radiator parts it is possible that we have a few little leaks and things so i'm just going to add a little bit of streaking there from them not masses not going to go over the top just a small amount to give the impression that perhaps some of the airflow is hot and it's burnt the underside or um there's a bit of a leak in some way, minimal, but it's affecting the paint finish slightly. 
So I'd say that the uh, gun smoke is done and the other side is done in this in the smoke department. There is a bit more I want to do and that's just on the engine exhaust areas. So for the engine exhaust areas on the actual aircraft you can see it doesn't just go in a straight line. It sort of curves down and away which is where the airflow would be being forced. So it's a slightly curved affair. So we'll start off at the back here and then work our way round and down. And this may take up a little bit of a build up because obviously the engine is on the entire time the aircraft is in flight. So we may need a little bit more just to make it look particularly dirty. You want to also build it up more towards the engine and then have it have less of it as you streak it out away from the engine. Again, starting close to the engine and then streaking away. If you put too much on, you can just blow it away. So this was the pretty much the final step. You could go even further and add washes to the panel lines. I'm not sure that at this point in time it's particularly worth it. Panel lines on the bottom are fairly visible, um, so they're not really worth adding a wash to. The top surfaces, because of those paints that we used, they've been filled in a little bit by the paint, so it won't be so great to add to that. So I'm not going to bother putting a wash on this. I don't really see the point at this moment in time. Um, but if you'd like to learn more about doing a wash, I do have a tutorial on that, which you can find on my channel. But in a nutshell, I would say that at this point now, I'm pretty happy with this model. And this is where I'm going to leave it. So what we've done is we've taken a basic gift set starter set model with the included paints, added a few bits and pieces extra. And over the course of this series, we've ended up with a model that looks something like this. And I hope that if this was your first model and you've managed to follow along and you've built it with me, then you've really enjoyed what you've done and you've got the bug to carry on and get some more kits. As someone who reviews models, I think it's worth just mentioning that um, during the build of this kit, if I was doing a review, I'm not entirely sure that I'm 100% happy with those new Humble paints. So I've spoken about the color of the paints and the um, opacity and the fact that, you know, they're a bit blotchy. This was a the same kit, which I built a few years ago. Naturally, I've, uh, I've gone a bit crazy on it and I've put some battle damage on it, a bit more hardcore in that respect. It's a little bit old now, it's been sitting on the shelf, a little bit dusty. But you can see the difference in the paint colours there. Uh, the one on the left is the one we've just built with the included paints. The one on the right was done with the included paints at that time. So you can see that there is a marked difference there between the different paint qualities. The one on the left, the, the colours don't quite match. The brown is a little bit more red. The green is a little bit more vibrant, whereas on this side, they're a little bit more darker. Um, I also think that on this side here, um, this one has, it's more blotchy. The paint wasn't, um, the, the pigments weren't as good, whereas on this one, the paint finishes a lot smoother. So uh, as a review, I'd say maybe the, the paints aren't that great in these current sets. So going out and getting your own paints might be a good idea. I have used in the past Humbrol Acrylics to airbrush the exact same kit. So now there's three of them on my bench. And um, you can see on this one, I added a panel line wash to it. It's a bit vibrant, but I did that pretty much to highlight how to do a panel line wash. So again, make sure you check out that video if you'd like to see that. Finally, I do have one more. And this one was airbrushed, but this one was airbrushed with Hataka. Um, airbrush ready paints and once again you can see that the paint color is different manufacturers will make the same paint essentially uh, for the same reason but they'll have slightly different shades but out of all of them i'd say that perhaps the one we built today is the one that looks a bit more cartoony and a little bit less as realistic as it potentially should i'd say that these ones here are pretty much in line with the paint colors that probably would have been found on um, Spitfires during the Battle of Britain, whereas this one, not quite sure. Uh, so yeah, during your modeling hobby, you may well find different paints that you like to work with more than others. To finish off though, I've enjoyed building this model with you today, and I hope that you've enjoyed this series. Let me know down in the comments, how did you get on with your Spitfire, and what else would you like me to do in a Build With Me series on my channel? 
As always, quick shout out to my channel members and patrons. Massive thanks to these guys on screen for the support they give my channel. If you'd like to join them, take a look at the links in the description. If you enjoyed this one, dropping a like would be greatly appreciated. And if you're new here, subscribing with notifications on will mean you never miss a modeling upload. Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.